irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to What Women Want with Judy Goss, only on LA Talk Radio. Good evening, everyone. Hello, and thank you for tuning in once again to What Women Want Talk Radio. I am also with Kristen West, who's in our studio in L.A., and we have yet another exciting show for you. So far, it's been very exciting. It's called Powering Through Changes, Physical, Mental, All Kinds of Changes. Whether you like it or not, life is full of changes, and sometimes when you least expect it. And our experts, Randy Levin from Randy Levin Coaching and Catherine Marshall, founder of Simple Fat Burn, will be revealing many simple truths and tips to help get through any kind of change. As Kristen says, conversation that feeds your mind and energizes your spirit. Kristen, I feel like we're always changing. We always have to adapt to change, and that's the, the miracle and the challenge and the joy and the excitement of life, I think. <laughs> that's for sure. Life is just, I guess, you know, it's funny. I was telling somebody, I think it was actually last week on the show, or maybe it was just in conversation during the week, that it took me so long to realize, oh, I know what they, they asked me when I was going through all the upheaval with the bankruptcy and, and you know, all the personal issues that we had during the recession. And I got laid off twice in a row. And, you know, everything was such a huge change. And, and they said, you know, how did you get through it? How did you power through? And I said, you know, every day I just made sure I took a step forward, whether it was getting out of bed or just, you know, embracing the fact that, you know, my kids were healthy and that kind of thing. So I really learned at that point that, you know, bad changes don't last forever, but good changes, bad changes, it, it's just life and, and what's made up of it. No, it's true. And sometimes even the smallest step is a step in the right direction. You know, I tell myself some days on those days that are really bad and onerous and I wanting to throw in the towel, you know what, I moved a millimeter today towards my goals. That's that's better than some people can even dream of. So that's Yeah, what it's better than going it's going better than going the other way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, we're going to change for the moment our thinking over and we're going to thank our listeners. We've been on over three years and we've hit over 800,000 downloads. Actually, you know what? It's more. I need the new report there because we are climbing towards that million num download number. And uh, I've got to get the new report from Sam because our numbers are really, they've really been climbing lately. I'm very excited. We have, we've had some amazing shows. So if you haven't subscribed to us, please do so on iTunes or you can visit our archives on LA Talk Radio's website, latalkradio.com, and just look for What Women Want. Okay, who am I? Judy Goss. Besides being one of the hosts of this awesome radio show, I'm also a TV host, a regular contributor on NBC and Fox. I am plugging my Spirit of Women conference <laughs> that is happening next week. I'm the founder of a networking organization called What Women Want. We have chapters, uh, regional chapters from coast to coast, and we're having our first National Women's Conference in Atlanta at the Westin Hotel next week. I'm so excited. I hope everyone out there is listening will consider joining us, especially if you're in the Atlanta area. Tickets are flying out the door, so visit spiritofwomenconference.com if you're interested. And uh, I am also, after I plug the conference there shamelessly, um, I have to finish my bio. It's real quick, though. Well, I'm a St. Martin's Press author, and I'm a freelance writer for New York Lifestyles Magazine. And the most important job of all, actually, it's probably not a job because it's not really considered work, but I'm a mom of twin girls, and they're now 13 years old. Kristen, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? I am an award-winning actress, screenwriter, and producer, and my film Seeking Valentina was nominated for two awards at the recent Hollywood Dreams Film Festival in Las Vegas, and I also co-wrote a script called Likeness, which is also nominated for a screenwriting award at this year's Fantastic Horror Film Festival, and I have a few films coming out later this year, The Spirit Room, Hell's Kitty, and The Lich. They're a little spooky, just in time for Halloween, all due later this year. <laughs> you know, I think you and I cover the gambit as far as the entertainment industry. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Except for maybe like makeup and hair, right? <laughs> well, some of the makeup I do for myself is scary, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, I'm really excited, again, about our Spirit of Women Conference. You're going to be representing Hollywood, California, and all its glamorous celebrities. So I'm very excited about that. I can't wait to take a picture of you on that red carpet. I, I am so excited to get to meet all of the women in person, and I'm so excited about our speakers, especially Catherine and Randy, and just getting getting there and really, really having these great conversations one-on-one that we have together each week. Well, I'm not sure that you know, but Randy and Catherine actually are both going to be in the, at the conference. Randy's coming in from New Jersey, and uh, Catherine's down in Atlanta. So it's going to be really exciting to for all of us just to come together. So if anyone out there, again, tickets are flying out the door so far. We have very few left, but we are, you know, we're getting there. Um, if you go to spiritofwomenconference.com, we do have a 50% sale until they sell out. So we want to fill that room. And 10% of all tickets uh, go for Habitat for Humanity from here on out. So they're sending someone to speak on behalf of their charity. And this topic on change now fascinates me because I feel like I'm about to birth a baby with this conference. (laughs) So change is really everywhere you look. And now this conference for me is positive change, but there's negative change. And I imagine our experts are going to fill us in. So let's bring on the first one, Randy Levin. Randy is a nationally recognized transitional life strategist and a reinvention expert supporting women in redirecting and curating their lives by utilizing their own legacy as a power tool for change and transformation. Randy Levin Coaching is widely quoted and featured in top media outlets, and Randy is a keynote author and influencer on change and transformation. She believes that we make some serious whole life decisions in our 20s and that no longer fits a 40, 50, or 60-year-old version of ourselves. So like a good book, every chapter of life prepares you for the next chain of events in the story, and every chapter has renewed and altered growth, purpose, and success. Welcome to the show, Randy. Thank you, Judy and Kristen. Great to be here with you on my favorite topic, too. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Change. It's all <laughs> over the place, right? Randy, I'm excited to see you at the conference next week. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for plugging us. You're all over the place. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we appreciate pleasure. it. I love what you're doing. It. And, oh, and I thank love you. those changes that, that you're pivoting toward with us. You know, we, we all, we have changes that we choose, right? And the conference for you is one of those those type of changes. And then we have changes that happen whether we want them to or not, whether we stand glued in place or, or, or not. So we all experience both of those. That's for sure. So I'm going to start with a question right out of your introduction because I'm interested in exactly what you do. It reads that you're a reinvention expert supporting women in redirecting and curating their lives by utilizing their own legacy as a power tool for change and transformation. What exactly does that mean? Well, I'm, I'm all about legacy. I mean, we typically think of legacy, Judy, as this, this thing that we leave behind. It's the thing after we're gone, you know, what our life was, past tense. Mm-hmm. If we take that same concept and we bring it into the current moment, we then give ourselves the power to really be able to choose and create the life we want. It's very, very empowering because we can then drive that and really be able to um, pick and choose the things we want to do. And, you know, as as you were saying in in the intro, we do make these decisions, um, you know, early on in our lives that we're going to be this or do that or we get married and, and, and start our families and we think that this these purposes that we have are, are necessarily going to be our purposes forever. So you help not. people obviously find their purpose. Find their purpose and refine their purpose because we all have more than one. We, we have many. We have many reinvents and many rewrites. Well, that's um, good to hear that I'm not completely crazy up. having 8 million <laughs> interests and <laughs> Not at all. And <laughs> not at all. And it's great that you're aware of that because for a lot of people they're not you know they they stay in that same mode of what they've been doing whether it's been working or not working and they kind of fall into that you know um it's not broken don't fix it or you know this is what i know and so you know when we when we uh choose change we're choosing the unknown and now, that can what's be scary. One of the first, yeah, no, that is scary. And I'm just wondering what one of the first steps is someone would make that's looking at 
some kind of change in their life, whether it's, you know, going through a divorce or they want to change their career or they, you know, want to change something about themselves, lose weight, that type of thing, which Catherine's going to come on a little bit and talk to us about too. That's a big change. What is the first step that you would say to someone that's, you know, looking at one part of their life wanting to change it? Well, the first step is that awareness um, and actually owning it, you know, acknowledging it, saying, okay, so I'm getting a divorce or my kids are, are leaving the house, I'm empty nested, or I, I want to step out of that corporate job. I want to own my own business. I want to step into being a solopreneur. Being aware that something's going on, there's all these whispers that happened. Um, in my own reinvention, I know that there were so many different things that were kind of echoing at me at the same time. So things like health and wellness, very very much so for myself. Um, also, even my, my friends were changing, you know, where I was seeking friends, who, the kinds of types of conversations, um, the things I was doing, everything was shifting just a little bit. Mm -hmm. You had to pull those pieces together, and that's what I help people to do, because once you have that awareness, it's a matter of changing your perspectives. And when we can change our perspectives, we change. So by coaching, you, you step away from your life just long enough to be able to look back in uh, from a different vantage point, from a, from a different point of view. So some of the first things that, that we do are really to acknowledge and kind of celebrate that awareness, and that's your first success. And the rest is a lot of those little steps that you were defining before. It really, really is a matter of being able to look at your own growth and be able to celebrate that. Randy. Um, I, yes. I had a question because you're an expert in change. W what's been the biggest change you've had to make to empower yourself? Oh, my goodness. So many. Getting out of my own way. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it all comes down to, to one thief that we all, we all have, and that thief is fear, right? So, you know, fear comes at us in different ways. We all have fears, and we all have them all of our life. And when we can learn to live alongside those fears, that's when we can step forward into different things. And I think that for a long time, I myself was limiting my own awareness, my own perspective as to what I could balance, what I could do, what I could handle. And we start to tell ourselves a lot of, a lot of stories about how we think things will be or what the outcome would be or the reasons why we can't do something. It's not the right time or we don't have the skills or we don't have enough money or whatever those stories may be. And, you know, for a lot of people, you know, you live with those stories. Is it but the moment that you can start to, to shift that a little bit, and I have some really nice tools for that. The mo moment you can start to shift that and move that away a little bit, you can start to take steps forward into that thing you fear the most, and then it becomes a success. It becomes your own growth. Is there a is there a way to? Because I know resistance. It's it's one of those things that you, I constantly have to work to not allow my resistance to certain things get in the way of my best interest. Is there a is there a shortcut to overcoming that resistance? Well, I think we I, we all have the resistance too and the resistance is really the fear masked. It's like procrastination, you know, we, we all tend to do certain things because we're afraid of whatever that outcome is. So whether it's a fear of success or a fear of failure or a fear of the unknown. Um, so again, we're, we're, we're storytellers. Um, so it's really about um, being able to, I'm going to give you a couple of tools. Three words, three, three little concepts to remember. First of all, the word and. If you take anything that you're telling yourself, any story that you're, that you're weaving, any resistance that you're giving yourself in this case, and you, you add the word and to the end of the sentence, say it out loud, and then finish what you're saying. So give me, give me a for instance. Where, where do you give yourself resistance, Kristen? Oh, my. <laughs> now, um, I... Who's the interviewer here? Go right, ahead, Kristen. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm afraid to take the action I need to take and... <laughs> and? And I know that I will feel more empowered when I actually do it. Okay. Let's take it one step further. Say the beginning part again. 
I'm afraid to take the action that I need to take. And? And? What is one thing you can do right now that would take action on something that you've been wanting to take action on? And that's how you complete the sentence. Ah. Now, I want to talk to you about something because I, I see this... In, in around me peripherally I am not married but I have a lot of friends that are at that 30 year mark and you in the average age for couples going through their first divorce is actually age 30 and I know that you also specialize in coaching people that are going through divorce situations that's a big mm-hmm. change it's the biggest change uh, really one of the single biggest changes anybody can can go through because everything shifts from your finances to your friends to where you live to where you work to your relationship to to yourself your relationship to your children it all changes at once so that that is a big one yes so Kristen what was your question well my que- my question was you know is there is there a way to really make peace with those big changes is is it something that takes years or is there a way to to make that more palatable palatable is not even the right word less less hurtful in months uh, the average turnaround time for someone re-entering the dating scene you want to is, speed up the healing time. yeah p- speed up the healing time it's about three years from what the research right. shows so your question your question is is there a better a, an easier way to um facilitate that yes um it depends individual i mean everybody goes through um how they come out of a divorce a little bit differently there is certainly a mourning period if you would you know there's a loss um but there's also every ending has a beginning and it's a new beginning so every time i do have a client who is going through and getting through that divorce period i'm always saying congratulations because something's ending but something's starting and Mm -hmm. it's a blank slate and you can create whatever it is you want on that slate. So in, envision that you have this incredible canvas and all these beautiful paints and pastels and colors in front of you. And now you can create at whatever age, whether you're 30 or 40 or 60, whether you've been married five years or 10 years or, or one year and you're coming out of this relationship, you can create whatever you want on this canvas. And so it's a rediscovery of yourself in that time period and you know looking back a little bit to what are some of the things that you love to do before you were married you know have you been doing them is that something you want to return to you know what are some of the things that you didn't do in your marriage that that you'd like to that you talked about but never really did is this the time to do those um are the, and what are the two other tools? people is there's like this this resistance back that um oh well you know my husband never traveled and i always wanted to travel and then i'll say well great so it's time to travel and they'll say but i don't have money uh. and so my answer to that is there's always a way so it's not the african safari perhaps or the trip to paris but it certainly could be a trip to your friend's beach house or a day trip somewhere or one overnight in, in your favorite city. So there's always a way to scale it so that you can take that, that step, that calculated step forward into doing something you really want to do. And, and that's what it's about. It's each step forward in, in a way that um, you can string them together almost like a, a strand of pearls so that each, each little piece takes you towards something else. And what are the two other tools that that we need okay, to so learn too. the power of the word and, mm-hmm. um, and also your ability to ask, you know, and not just in a divorce situation, but I think in any situation where you're looking for some changes in your life, you're looking to, to perhaps step into something else. You know, we think we ask questions. We think we ask, you know, intelligent questions, but sometimes we're not really asking them. We're assuming that people think we are or we're hedging around it a little bit ask for what you want you want that promotion you want to meet that person you want to do whatever it is that that you've been wanting to do ask because when you don't ask the answer is no right if you don't i I want to make sure we get to your your giveaway too so let's talk about number three and then and then talk about what you have for our listeners sure 
Um, so the third one is really when we're up against a lot of change, sometimes one of the things is that we're up against what other people are thinking or saying. Um, and it becomes sometimes difficult to um, be able to step into that a little bit and, and understand it. And so instead of getting ourselves upset, right, it's, it's important to be able to just say, okay, fine. And, and let certain things roll off of us so that our energy stays in the current moment. And that's really important. Where our energy is is where we are. Find the peace in the situation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So tell us about this. This. Uh, what are you What are you doing here with your free your free offer? It's like a five hour audio session or something. Well, my my reinvention summit was a, a workshop that I did um, in a webinar, and now it's it's repositioned um, for sale as a five hour workshop and what I'm offering to your listeners is one of those five workshops for free and that's my favorite it's how to move from fear to fearing less and that's available um, at the following um, code and it's bit dot ly forward slash randy levin free audio it's bit dot ly forward slash randy levin free audio and people can find me in residence on my website always at randy com. and that's randy with an i and that's really important because a lot of times we don't realize that we're actually fearing something and i think to you know to try to make it more make ourselves more aware of it and then how to get out of it is is a very important tool so thank you for that again the link is bit.ly forward slash randy with an i levin free audio is that right mm -hmm. That's correct. excellent well thank you so much for coming on the show we are really grateful to have you and um i feel like it's always too short when we start getting deep into the subjects <laughs> but we have mm -hmm. to have, definitely have you on again and i'm excited to see you next week great same here can't wait thanks judy thanks Kristen. Okay, Catherine Marshall, going to bring on Catherine, right? Yes, we are. Catherine Marshall is the author of Simple Fat Burn, Three Steps to Becoming Fit and Lean. As a fitness expert, therapist, and coach, she gets the inside story on how people truly change and manage life when the unexpected happens. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here with you, Kristen and Judy. Well, it's great to be with you here, too. I, you know, I'm just, I, I, I see you on social media each and every week. You've been promoting the show. We're so excited to have you at the conference as well. Now, that Facebook Live tonight was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, Go ahead, Kristen. So I have to ask the question of you, Catherine. What, what's been the biggest change that, that you've ever had to make, and how did you tackle it? Oh, gosh. You know, for me, it was really reinventing my life. Um, and, you know, I tackled it one bite at a time. <laughs> you know, I, I, I guess when um, I got divorced and I found myself in a financial crisis and my son was very small, I had to rebuild my career. I transitioned from being a social worker into becoming a fitness expert. So I really shifted gears and, and I changed you know what I did but one thing remained the same I have always believed that people can change so I not only reinvented my own life but I, I've been that catalyst for change I've been the therapist and the the cheerleader for people when they come in and they know they've, they've really got to change everything to get where where they want to go you know it's that is you know go ahead Kristen it's interesting because you you have this Nike-esque type philosophy you know what you do when you keep going you just you just get up and go Catherine what happens when you <laughs> physically just can't how do you reset your mind for that change how do you how do you keep it fresh how do you keep it going I want to know you know I I really am a big big believer in getting help I will say I showed up when I was changing for everything and you know, I, I think we have a core belief system. And if you can tap into that belief system that if I can keep going, something is going to work. And quite possibly, all of it is working. You know, you show up for, with one practitioner, you show up at a meeting, you have a conversation with a friend, you pick up the self-help book. I literally did all of it. 
and and I think you know we all resonate with different things that work for us. So I think you've got to try a little bit of some different things, and and then you've got to kind of land on what is really speaking to you, what is speaking to your soul, and empowering you to take that next step. Yeah. So if you can't get up off the couch, then plug your earplugs into a self help tape on your phone or something. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Like there's, basically, there's, one thing leads to another, right? Absolutely. And I mean, we have the power of the internet. There's YouTube. I mean, you you can absolutely tune into something positive and something that is going to move you in the right direction with a click or or just just hunting around for things that that might speak to you. But, you know, people really are your connection. And I I know, Judy, you and I so believe in the power of networking. I think when you build a, a great support system, whether they're professionals and or friends and, and people that you just know you can pick up the phone or send a message to, I think at some point you've got to have other people in your corner to help you get where you're going. Right, that's for sure. We can't do it without each other's support. And you are such a a role model for that. I mean, I want to say icon almost. (laughs) Because, you know, you... thank you. And you said earlier that you do, you you know, bite, you just take little bites out of what you're trying to learn or do and you grow. And and I've seen it happen. And and it's just incredible some of the things you do and, and how you've built, you know, your reputation and your business on just that. You know, talking to people, picking up the phone, motivating people. I'm very impressed because recently I met Carly Grenner and she lost a hundred pounds within eight months. Is that right? She did. Eight months and three days to be exact. One hundred pounds. <laughs> it's crazy. And and her father too? Is, is that right? Her, her and her father? Her her dad actually lost 200 pounds in 16 months and he had, oh my gosh. He had finished his, his big weight loss journey before she started. So he already had the 200 pounds down and off for a while before Carly stepped up and started losing losing the weight. Now, what's the correlation there when somebody loses that much weight as far as mentally, you know, how they end up? I'm just curious as, you know, do sometimes they like their former selves more than how they end up? Is there ever an issue there with, you know, wanting to go back maybe because it's a safe place or how does that work? Because I know you used to be a social worker too, so you know a lot about how people sure. think, not just physically. I know your co- company is Simple Fat Burn um, at the moment, you know, that's what you do, but you do have a lot of experience in, in, as far as mentally also, how the mind works. Well, you know, that that's a really good point, Judy, because, you know, although I, I'm classically trained as a social worker and therapist, it's all the same thing. The change happens on all levels. It's mental. It's physical, it's emotional, it's social. And on some level, it is spiritual. So I think, you know, there are different different depths of each one of those aspects when change happens. And a lot of it is mental and emotional and just really grasping this new way of life, this new way of being viewed by other people. And, you know, it's very, very deep. Um, it's not always linear, linear. We know some people will make quite a bit of progress and zap right back to the old behaviors. So I will say that a lot of this has to do with the subconscious. The subconscious is running the show. And there are lots of ways to get into the subconscious. But, you know, having those conversations with another person and really putting to rest some old behaviors that are not serving your soul, that are not really making you feel good and and be the person that you want to be that is a big hunk of it and it has to be replaced with something new a new way of thinking a new way of functioning a a new way of, of behaving so this really boils down to one big thing and that is behavior modification well, I need some behavior modification for sure, because I'm a very, very <laughs> bad girl. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting. I'm so glad we're talking to you today because you have this this breadth and depth of experience. And I know one thing that we all experience as women, whether we're, you know, 13-year-old twins like, like Judy has, or if we're, Uh-oh, here we're, we go. If we're, 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 we're a woman of a certain age or we're somewhere in between, as women... Our bodies change. And and what changes do you think women have the most, and girls, have the most difficulty with dealing with, especially with their bodies? Is it is it getting the baby weight off? Is it is it the, the metabolism slowdown after your 20s? What is it? 
Are they all difficult? Oh gosh, I'm going to tell you, and it's really on a little bit of a different tangent, the answer to your question. I think that the real change is really learning to accept and love ourselves as we are. And that's at any stage and age. And, and, and that's pretty deep. And that's, a, that's very, very challenging. You know, we have this unrealistic perception that we get somewhere along the line, whether it's five years old or 15 years old or, or 35 years old, of what we, quote, should be. And for some reason, we never quite measure up. So I think there has to, at some point, become a, a, a self-serving sort of um, platform that we step onto that says, you know what, I'm going to accept myself, I'm going to love myself, I'm going to be okay with where I am, and through that, we're absolutely able to make changes, anyone can change, anyone can lose weight, but but the real question is, how do we really become who we want to be and feel good about it, and I think that comes from a place of love and acceptance. It's absolutely true what you're saying, and I think one of the things also is when people look in the mirror as as time goes by and the march of time is some people say oh my god i'm becoming my parents and mm-hmm. and there there there's a great i think act of of love and acceptance in there to saying you know this is this is what my parents gave me this is what my grandparents gave me and then trying to make the best of of that jumble that's you do you find people that come in and go oh my god i'm becoming my mother my father my 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 grandmother oh absolutely i hear that all the time i looked in the mirror and oh gosh i saw i didn't like what i saw and you know it's just as easy in some respect to say i'm aging gracefully mm-hmm. it's just as easy to say i'm getting better and when you're really uh, ch- doing making those changes and we're talking about mindset we're talking about nutrition we're talking about exercise and when you're in alignment and you're doing things that are good for yourself and good for others you know you're going to feel better. You know you're going to feel good. And that's really where you get to a place of feeling like, gosh, I'm headed in the, in the right direction. And, you know, there's this, this elusive thing out there called, quote, getting on track. I, I'm not quite sure what that is, but I think it has something to do with, you know, I'm, I'm taking the steps daily that are really in alignment with serving my higher self. You know, it's interesting because I know for me, Variety is the spice of life. You know, I go on, I go on <laughs> yoga binges. I am Miss Yoga. I am in there. I am bending. I am flexing. And then I will go <laughs> on trampoline binges. And it's hard sometimes to. I have to really listen to myself when I when when the yoga binge or the trampoline binge is over. I have to pivot to something else to keep some semblance of exercise going on. <laughs> yeah, in the same way. That's so funny. Is, is there yeah. is there you know, a way to check there, into there's yourself? The thing is too, too much is too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kevin, do you ever feel like not working out? You know, it's like I see these personal trainers and, and people like you that are so motivating all the time. You have so much energy. Any but Anyone who you speak to all, all around the country actually knows how, you know, energizing you can be. Do you ever just, want, like, some mornings just go, oh, I got to oh, go to the- Absolutely. You know, I think we go through waves of time where we, we, we really ramp it up. And then there are waves of times where we really, we really scale back. And, you know, it, you know, again, we have these perceptions. You know, I, I certainly don't work out every day. And I go through times where, you know, I, I pull back quite a bit. But I always feel good if I do something. You know, productivity always feels good. And the best way to get out of a mental form is to break it with the physical. I mean, if you challenge your body, it will knock the socks off of any antidepressant. If you challenge your body for 30 minutes for a day and you really pump it up, you know, your your brain, you're going to produce endorphins and serotonin. So, you know, there is something to be said for physiologically challenging the body in an appropriate way. And I'm not talking about overkill and doing too much and and really being exhausted and being sore and not being able to function. I'm talking about that space where you feel good. You're doing something that you know is, again, serving your soul and your higher self. And you know what? You feel sexy, too. That's an added You do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's so much. It's, 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 it
<laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, it all comes back to Catherine, what you were saying before that you know you you really have to in the core of and even you know when you're trying to power through change, you really have to learn to love yourself so yourself can be stronger to get through those changes, and and that's both good and bad changes. But how do we? What are some steps we can take? You know, besides uh, challenging ourselves physically or you know looking in the mirror and trying to change that perspective. What else can we do to try to get through change, you know, whether it be good or bad? I don't know if there's, if, if people should mm-hmm. handle the good and bad changes differently or not. Hmm. Well, well, I've, I've got a couple of tips. Number one, I think it's extremely important to get clarity about what is going on with your changes and what you're trying to create. The clarity is a big deal. And, you know, that may take a little bit of work. And, and I think it shows up in, in pieces over time. So I'm a big believer in scripting and writing out your new story and creating your story story through that writing. And this is not journaling, but, you know, you're familiar with Dr. Joyce Reynolds, and she's, she's taught me scripting, and I've followed her for years. You know, it, it's writing your new story, so I think that's extremely important. And then the second piece I'm going to give you real quick is to keep your mind in the now. If we're constantly flipping forward to what if or thinking about the past, guess what we're creating? A rewrite. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are we creating? I'm, you know, that took me. Uh, it's still, I'm still learning not to, to not be in the future. But what are we creating there? What are we doing to ourselves when we do that? Well, we are really creating whatever we're thinking about. So I will tell you, over the years, I've become very vigilant about my thoughts, and I've become very consistent about my scripting. What's but if we don't visualize what's going to hap- what's going to happen in the future, how can we stay in the now? Well, I think we can visualize to some degree, but you know the the point that Randy was making about fear. Most people are living in a state of fear and anxiety, and and, and really, when you ask people how much fear and anxiety do they have, typically it's quite a bit. And it's, it's worrying about things that could happen. It's replaying old stories that they didn't like and, and thinking, oh, gosh, that could happen again. You know, it's, it's kind of like, um, Kristen, you were talking about the, the dating situation. Somebody gets out of a relationship and it's painful. You know, it's not the forever after more. And how soon do you reintegrate into dating? Well, you really have to write a new story. I know I went through that for a long time. And I said, gosh, I'm going to go out and start dating. And I'm, I'm just going to go out and have fun. i got to get out the door and get out with someone once a week. And I said to myself, if I don't like it, it's just going to be coffee. And, and I could say, thank you so much after 30 minutes. And you know what? I went out and I had a great time. and met some fabulous people, you know, before I, I landed with the person that I really wanted to be with. But at some point, you've got to get off the couch and you've got to keep your mind in the present and say, hey, I'm creating from where I am right now to create a, a great time, a new date, a new partner, and, and, you know, maybe possibly the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. There seems to be an underlying theme here, Kristen, huh? There is. There is. <laughs> visualizing your sexiest self for optimum results. today though not tomorrow not you know visualizing yourself how you were 10 years ago right which you know when you get to my age it's always nice to see but (laughs) but you know Catherine you're speaking to something you gotta accept yourself who you are right now right and you know what Catherine you're speaking to something so important because when you're when you're thinking about what happened Mm -hmm. to you in, in kindergarten or in junior high or in high school or in college and you're in the past and you're thinking about the past and re envisioning it and recreating it or you're thinking about the future what's going to happen to me tomorrow the next day the next day there's so many opportunities in the present that you just Mm -hmm. may have blinders to because you you miss it do you have like a little like zap that if your mind's wandering that you go to do you have like a mantra like i am here or or do you like tap yourself on the wrist or what what do you do to when you find yourself like daydreaming or or trying to reinvent the past is there something that you you use to pull you back how do you slap yourself back Uh-oh. into reality? <laughs> you know, I know this is going to sound silly, but it really is my go-to, and it, it is just to send love. Mm. And I like how do that. you do that? 
Well, I, you know, whatever's going on, I think, you know, you really open up from your heart and from kind of that center of your beingness. And if you're sending love towards an idea or a situation or a person, you know, what has to come back? A positive situation. Absolutely. Love is the very highest vibration. So, you know, if you're replaying that old story, you really can rewrite the story and say, even though that didn't turn out the way I had hoped, I'm sending love, I'm letting go. And I love this idea of living in the per- in the present and truly creating your future because we forget how powerful we are. You know, we're the main player in this whole show called life. It sounds and like maybe we wouldn't have to power through so many negative changes if we created more positive ones. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, even when the positive changes are coming, like, you know, here, Judy, you're hosting this big conference. You know, all these things come up and, and change can be difficult. Or you're stepping into this new area in your career or, or that new fabulous person shows up in your life. Uh, a lot of fear and anxiety and things and emotions can crop up even when the changes are fabulous. So uh, the way that I think that you handle that is you send love and you really get positive. And again, I believe in writing it down as if it's already done and, and filling in the details. And guess what happens? Your odds are so good of creating a positive outcome when you keep your mind in that positive state again and again. If you start to flip, yes, snap right back into the now and say cancel out the negative. Let's really stay positive. So I think it has a lot to do with consciousness and awareness. And and Randy really spoke to that as well. I think the consciousness and awareness is huge as as life is happening and we're going through changes and we're evoking the change that we want to create. You see what I mean, Kristen? Isn't she amazing? She is. And my (laughs) mind is like, if you were here with me and you could see the contents of my mind, you'd see all these little love thought bubbles kind of going through the air right now. Uh, oh. But I think what you're speaking to... Y'all can hug each other next week. I, I know, right? She'll see my thought bubbles. It'll be cool. So but, beautiful. But but I think what you're speaking to, Catherine, is we have to also forgive. Now, that doesn't make what happened to us not important or not hurtful or suddenly makes it all better, but I think we have to make a, a, a conscious effort to forgive the circumstances that are causing us trouble and, and forgive the, forgive the, um, forgive the things that, that don't always go right. And we have to, I, I think that idea of sending love really speaks a lot to forgiveness. Oh, it sure does. It sure does. And that is so powerful because when you really think about what stories you're holding on to, you know, and the stories that you're you're going over and creating, and, and especially if you're telling them to people, you are creating your future through those emotions and that emotional hook to those stories. And when you really listen to people, listen to what they're saying, they will tell you all about it and they will tell you what's coming next. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> It's interesting because in all of our all of our our religious thought is based on this. Our 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 stories are based on this. That you know the 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 good the good witch has the magic words bippity boppity boo and everything is cool. Or you have you know in the beginning there's a word and there's and and the word creates everything. So this is the words we use are so powerful. Do you find oh, yeah. do you find that there's something? words that you use obviously you're coaching people getting them in there getting them to sweat getting them to feel the burn is there words that work for everybody you know it's not it's not words that work for everybody but there are words that typically i would say have a very high vibration and you know it's funny because carly lost that 100 pounds we coached through this she lives in florida i live in atlanta we had one phone conversation per month the rest of this was done by text message. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it's you know, when you wor- use words that are empowering, when you really listen to what a person is going through, where their struggle and frustration lies, and then you apply a positive word, a positive sentence. When, if someone says, you know, I know you can get through this, and again, they're speaking from their heart, they're going to connect. They're going to feel like, oh, gosh. You know, you're speaking my truth. I just said to a friend earlier tonight, 
thank you for speaking those words of truth. And she said, I'll always tell you the truth. <laughs> and, and that's how we support each other as we're, as we're moving through change. So, you know, I think it's high vibrational words. If you listen to some of the best speakers around the world in all t- of all time, their words are things like excellent, wonderful, beautiful, loving. And they almost just loop these positive words. And, and, you know, that's how you build a trusting relationship. Every time you come back to me with a problem, I'm going to listen and I'm going to be supportive. Doesn't mean I need to sugarcoat things. Doesn't mean there isn't a problem that exists. But the way you build a loving, trusting relationship is you know you're going down this path with someone and you can count on them. Now, I know that there are people out there right now that are on the edge of their seats listening to you in this broadcast right now who are just wanting to know more about you. I understand you have a giveaway. Tell us about that. Oh, I do have a giveaway today. Yes. My giveaway today is a simple fat burn strategy session. So the pers- for the person who is frustrated, they've tried every diet out there or they've flipped back into the old habits and maybe they're at their highest weight ever or they just have to get that 10 pounds off. Or who knows, maybe it's 100 pounds. I'm offering a complimentary strategy session, which I will help them move in the right direction. So how can they get a hold of this? How, how can they get a hold of you? Or is there somewhere they a website they can go to? What, what do they do? Absolutely. Just go to my website. It's simplefatburn.com. Just the way it sounds, simplefatburn.com. And go ahead and contact me through the website and just request the complimentary strategy session. And we will set that up as soon as possible and get them moving in the right direction. And this session, like when you sit down with someone, you kind of, what is it, an outline that you go through with them and, and, you know, this is what I see for you and how we can roll this out, that type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. We assess what they're dealing with, what they want to create, and we get that clarity I was talking about earlier, and we put some things in place to move them in the right direction immediately. Get the clarity, write it down, go to Catherine's website, simplefatburn.com, and get the strategy session. It sounds like a good combo to me. It sounds like a good combo to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> a winning combo. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to you know come on the show tonight and, and let us know about your ways to power through change and you know what we can do physically and mentally, really, because you're just such a well-rounded package um, of that oh, knowledge. So, And, yeah, we appreciate it. And I appreciate all your support with the conference. My gosh, I would not have a conference, honestly, <laughs> next week if it weren't for you. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, we're so you, excited. Oh, thank my you. gosh. And you know what? everybody out there should know that you have been by my side every single second like I'm going through a coaching session with you and it's, it's just been fantastic so I, I can't thank you enough for that and next week for everyone else we have legendary producer and writer Steve Dorf coming on our into our studio actually his dossier includes Kenny Rogers mega hit through the years and his songs have been sung by many of the greatest singers of all time like Whitney Houston, Celine Dion Barbara Streisand and many more so stay with us people we are on a roll and bringing you more and more fantastic shows thank you so much for supporting us and good night you're listening to what women want with judy goss only on la talk radio